When most people think of the Great Plains, they think of wide open prairies. But these prairies are a result of frequent fire. If this important ecological process is not allowed to function, the prairies will disappear. Grassland untreated by fire will soon become dominated by woody plants such as elm, persimmon, Osage orange, and most of all, eastern red cedar. The woody plants shade out traditional prairie grasses and displace many of the native wildlife species. Eventually, the land becomes an eastern red cedar woodland. Eastern red cedar is a native tree to Oklahoma, but fire has kept it under control. Eastern red cedar, unlike most other woody plants that occur in the Great Plains, does not re-sprout from the root or stump when the top of the tree is killed. Prescribed fire is the most practical and economical way to manage it. The main thing on, on controlling red cedar is you have to have enough fuel to get them to burn. So the smaller trees, five or six feet tall and smaller, are usually controlled with a normal prescribed fire. Here is drawn down into the creek bottom. Research has shown that 98% of eastern red cedar trees under a foot tall can be killed by prescribed fire. When red cedar get larger, uh, they're harder to control with the kinds of burns we use just simply because there's not enough heat generated by the herbaceous fuels under those trees. But now if we have a wildfire under extreme conditions, you'll see the really big cedars burn up also. Fire frequency is the key. Landowners can use multiple burns over multiple years to kill larger cedars and keep seedling trees from establishing. The initial burns will allow grass to grow underneath the larger trees, fueling fires in the following years. Even if they do not crown out or become totally engulfed in flames, the heat from the fire can still kill eastern red cedars. In the year after a fire, the forb or broadleaf plant composition of the grassland increases. This is due to the increase in bare ground and the ability of annual forbs to take advantage of this disturbance. As grasses again become dominant, these annual forbs will decline. The increase in forbs, plant palatability, and nutritional quality on recently burned areas are beneficial to livestock, but also attract certain wildlife species. After a fire, Plants such as buckbrush, which are not highly preferred by wildlife or livestock, become more palatable. Most of these plants are also kept shorter in height by fire and are more accessible to browsing animals. What we're seeing here is a reflection of uh, successional processes that over time has, has created a dominance by we call the big four grasses in, in tall grass prairie, big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass, and switchgrass. This particular pasture has been burned repeatedly in late, late winter. We're now in late spring, and we see that we still have the dominance of those late successional grasses. One in particular that I think is interesting to note is this grass here, little blue stem. As you can see here, it, it has responded very well to this fire. Regrowth is, is, is quite uh, normal, and uh, we expect, uh, in fact, a, a full forage growth year this year, uh, even with a winter burn. Research has shown that burning little blue stem and other grasses at any time of year, including growing season burns, causes virtually no mortality. Landowners might think little blue stem was destroyed by fire because the center portion of the crown is dead. But this is the normal growth pattern for this grass. The center of the plant dies back and the new growth occurs along the edges of the crown. Fire increases both above and below ground growth on this important grass. 